So next up on the agenda is to talk about plugins. Plugins. Mini apps that add more features to your site. Range from free to not free. Um, oftentimes, add new widgets to your site. So uh, this is where the real power of WordPress happens. Out of the box, we get a lot of great features of WordPress, being able to make menus easily and having interesting designs and such. But then when we get to some features about how, how can I make a contact form, or how can I make a shopping cart, or how can I make a private login, uh, that's when plugins often come in. So those are the more features that we add to your site. Let's uh, check out a popular one that people always ask about, contact form. So I want to add the ability for people to contact us over in the, in the contact page. I want there to be a, a form that they fill out to send us a question or, uh, or such. Uh, instead of having my email address like that, I want it much more secure. It's not a good idea to have your email address out like that naked on your website because the spam bots are running 24 hours a day and they're scouring the internet for anything that looks like an email address. And all email addresses have the same format. Something at something dot something. So if a spam bot finds something that looks like an email, it'll capture it, it'll then put it in its database and you're gonna get spam. So I will say here advice. Don't put your email address naked out on the site. So bad is you know Victor at email.com. Good is use a contact form. The contact form shields you because a person has to fill out the the boxes and click send and then no one sees your email address and the best ones uh, have those uh, sort of security measures where it says you know pick all the boxes with cars or type in the letters in this little picture so better use a contact form with a captcha that's the official name of that thing captcha it stands for something but that's the uh, that's that sort of like little puzzle that you have to do before it allows you to send. Either typing in those letters, uh, clicking on the things that are that that are um, street signs, you know, all those things that you've seen. I've started to see, see some other ones also, like uh, what do these numbers add up to? And then you have to do a little math. So we will be able to do these. Let's go to your um, plugins screen. Just click on plugins. At the moment, we should have three plugins one active, two inactive. So we'll say you can have as many plugins installed as you want. You can have as many plugins active as you want, but the advice is only have the plugins you need. Only keep the plugins you need. Even if they're inactive, they're taking up resources. Even if you're not using them on the site, they're taking up space on the server. They're taking a bandwidth and, and all of that. Um, because when we talk about updates, updates in WordPress, you've got a plugin installed and it's not being used, but it's going to check back on the developer site. Is there a new version of this plugin? It's going to use up your resources. So, because. 
every plugin takes up resources and needs updates. Outdated plugins are a liability, a security liability. Plugins are made out of code, just like every other computer thing. And a liability or a security liability is when something's wrong with the code and someone figures it out and hacks into it and, and does bad stuff. So plugins also, they're made out of code. Plugins also sometimes have bugs in the software. And if it's a good developer, they are updating their code to keep it safe, to keep you safe. And if they're not, if they put out the plugin and they haven't updated it or haven't fixed the errors, the bad guys are going to figure out there's some, there's some back door, there's a hidden way in through that plugin, and then your site is compromised. So only keep the plugins that actually you're using. And we'll talk about updates later. That's its own lecture. In, yeah. Are plugins done as like one specific item, like add a column, add a short code, or do you buy a plugin that does multiple things without using the plugin? Usually the plugin has a specific task. The, the task of this plugin is to make a backup of the site. The task of this plugin is to stop spam. So usually the plugin has one particular task, but they're not in really the sense of this plugin gives me two columns. Uh, usually it's a design plugin that will give you two columns and new graphics and headers and footers and stuff. So it's not that fine fine tuned about I need a plugin for a left column. No, you need a plugin for design so that that can let you create the design of the site. But a plugin often has one particular task. In our case here, we've got three installed, but only one is active. And you can tell it's active because it's blue. These two are inactive. The preview here says, migrate a backup copy of your WordPress and the database. A Kismet. Used by millions, A Kismet is quite possibly the best way in the world to protect your blog from spam, etc. And then Hello Dolly. This is not just a plugin. It symbolizes the hopes and enthusiasm of an entire generation summed up in two words, etc. So this is kind of a joke plugin. Um, the only thing that this does is when it's activated, you will randomly see a lyric from Hello Dolly in the upper right corner of the admin screen. So you'll get a lyric from a song as you browse your dashboard. So it really has no purpose, but uh, Matt Mullenweg is the inventor of WordPress, so I guess if the boss wants that plug in there, then there it is. So I, I don't want this plug-in in my site. How do you think we remove it? Yep, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. We don't need the Hello Dolly plug-in. In this case, there is a pop-up that says, are you sure? Because on this one, there is going to be customization for most of these plug-ins. And here again, if you delete a plugin, you're going to delete its customization. Uh, so they should have this simple, like, are you sure, back when we were on, over on the widgets. But they don't. So I will say yes. Delete that. It's gone. Yeah. Question on these, uh, on these plugins, we're going to have a backup of our site, and we're able to put all that information on there. And then we could theoretically create two sites, one from a backup, and one Yes. Yes, everything comes with your site. When you do the duplicator backup, everything comes with it. The database, all of the plugins, and all of the settings. That's great because if you do go that other route and you mess it up completely, well, you've got a copy of the site before that that you can resurrect with duplicator and start over. Or start over at the point where you made the last backup. All right, so this one, uh, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to activate it. And what this is, you then have to set up an account. And this is free. We're not going to do this together. But this plugin is to help prevent spam. This is going to delete that those spam comments that might go into your site. Uh, it'll, it'll help protect you against that. It needs a little bit of a setup, and it's not complicated, but we're not going to do it together. 
but I do recommend this is one of the plugins that you should look into. I'm going to make a list here of recommended plugins. One is duplicator. The purpose is makes a perfect backup copy of your site. Also, migration. It'll let you transport your site from one provider, one server to another. We're in localhost at the moment, a virtual server. And I want to eventually transfer it to my GoDaddy or Bluehost. Well, Duplicator does that as well. And we'll see how later. A Kismet helps prevent spam. Requires a free account set up. So you can follow that button. It'll walk you through it. It will recommend a donation from like a dollar to a hundred dollars or whatever. But it'll let you uh, set it up with a zero donation. And uh, then you'll have this setup that helps prevent spam. The one we're going to do in a moment is called Contact Form 7. Creates powerful contact forms. Another we'll look at is called Jetpack. Many useful features in one plugin. And Yoast. Uh, powerful SEO uh, features. So I want to optimize my site for the search engines. Yoast is one that will help you with that. It'll analyze your site and give you advice. We'll, we'll look at all of these in a moment. These are some off the top of my head. Uh, there's many more with many more features. Uh, later on, uh, we're going to look at also WP e-commerce and WooCommerce. E-commerce plugin for beginners. E-commerce plugin advanced. So there's often a plugin for a task. I want to do something on my site. I want a new feature. It doesn't come built in with WordPress. Well, someone in the world, either an individual person working right out of their uh, garage or a, um, a design studio or a, de or a development studio, they create a plugin. They put it out for free or for pay or uh, try, try for free, then buy later. and. There's a whole cottage industry of people creating themes and plugins to add more features to WordPress. So it's very common for you to spend a little bit here and there to purchase the theme, to purchase the right plugin, and that's the cost of doing business of creating your website. I want to add Contact Form 7 um, to my site, so let's click at the top here, Add New. Under that add new screen, we want to we want to see that we've got featured, popular, recommended, and favorites. So here's some featured ones. Um, WP Super Cash supposed to be a way to speed up your site. There's Jetpack. We'll get that later. There's a Kismet. There's a bunch of keywords at the bottom here of what people often search for. Popular. Here's 52,000 popular ones. There's Contact Form 7. If yours is a little bit different than mine, don't worry. There's Yoast, WooCommerce, Tiny MCE, etc. Recommended. Let's see what's under recommended. WooCommerce, Yoast, Table Press, MailChimp, Event Calendar. So again, um, I have a particular need. On my website, I want to set up events. It doesn't come built into WordPress, but there's a plugin for it. And then once you start to um, use them and download them, they'll be added to your favorites. Uh, but let's do this. Under Search, let's search for Contact Form. You may have seen Contact Form 7, but let's just do a search.
Okay, so uh, I've searched contact form. I get 3,000 and a half results. I already know which one I want to use. I've, I'm already telling you which one we want to use. But let's say you're on your own and you want to add a certain plugin for a certain feature, and I'm not there to tell you my recommendation. I will uh, tell you how to objectively pick a good plugin. What to do? What's that? Yes, one, one, one of a few things to do, yes. What to do uh, when you're trying to decide on a plugin. You notice um, on each of these results, there's a description, there's a developer who created it, and then there's this very important stuff right below it. Uh, there's a star rating with how many people gave it that review. 1,500, four and a half stars. What's also important is to look at how many active installations, how many uh, people, how many websites in the world are using this. This is over a million. What's also important is when was it last updated? Like I said, software needs updates every once in a while. And if your plugins are old, if it says, you know, nine months, two years, or whatever, that's been nine months or that's been two years that that code has been out there and the hackers are trying to hack it and figure out the vulnerabilities. So plugins that haven't been updated in a while, and I would say personally three months is the limit, plugins that haven't been uploaded or updated in, in three months or less are a little suspect because the code might be old, it might be vulnerable, and it's going to make my site vulnerable. And then also compatibility. Obviously, you want to download a plugin that is compatible with your version of WordPress. So the advice is go for plugins that are three months or younger. Older is a security liability. Go for plugins with a high star rating and number of ratings because as I browse here I see okay this has got a perfect five stars right here perfect five stars well five stars is obviously better than four and a half um, but the problem is that um, I'm not finding any okay this one right here perfect uh, here's one of perfect five stars and the other one it was only four and a half. This is better, right? It has one review. So obviously, the theme, uh, the plugin author's mom reviewed it as a, as a courtesy. As a courtesy. So uh, the more stars, the more better. And I could convince two or three or ten people to give me a good review, five stars. But when it's at, you know, double digits, triple digits, quadruple digits, that's when I believe it. So contact form 7 here is 1,500. Contact form by WP Forms has 2,000. Now just by looking at it right here, um, 5 stars better than 4 stars. 2,000 reviews better than 1,000. 1 million, 1 million. Good. Compatible, compatible. Good. Newer, older. Just by those stats, I might pick this one. The problem is, I've never used this one. I'm not a pro in all of them. Uh, once you find one that works and that you like, keep using it. We're going to use W. We're going to use contact form in a moment, but maybe this one's better. I haven't used it. I don't know, but just by the stars, maybe it is better. Yeah. Uh, this uh, Caldera form says it does more things. Is it better to just keep it simple and just have it be a contact form, or do you look at things like Caldera form, which is at the bottom left corner right now? It um, it's up to the person if you want to go for a sort of a Swiss Army knife approach. It's not bad. It might 
be very good in terms of, well, I only need to deal with one plugin, one screen, one settings. So if this does the things that you need, I would go for it. It has way less than that, but 100,000 is still very good. These over here that I say like 200 installations, no thanks, you know, that's what's too few. We're going to find out how long they've been active. So like a million and 100,000, if they were born on the same day, that would be a problem. But if one was brand new. It's going to be somewhere over here when you go to more details. You'll see more details. And uh, you'll see reviews. They do have a screen, I've seen it somewhere, where it does show you a little chart about how old it is. So it is in there somewhere. You get a sense in general from this screen, but it would behoove you to go to more details and then poke around there on the different tabs and also on the plugins homepage or the double or the wordpress.org's page browse around in there to get the full answer but yes you will see all of those details in there yeah kind of the dovetail off of that so um contact form also has a mailchimp extender mm -hmm. is it better to be, stick with contact form 7 and use the extenders or go contact form 7 and then mailchimp separately it's just going to be de deciding the perfect plugin again. Um, it's going to be trying it out yourself, which is more intuitive, which is easier, which integrates better. Maybe also reading reviews. You could go off and do a Google search, a Yahoo search, and, and search how does these two plugins work or how do they work individually. And I'm sure there's reviews out there of like tech bloggers that will give you some advice. So it's kind of just trying it out, experimenting and such. Yes. Wouldn't it just generally make more sense to go with anything that uh, WordPress develops in, in house? You know, because they're the ones that are keeping it updated. Yes, but sometimes there isn't that option. Like, I don't see like an official WordPress plugin that's not an official WordPress company no, there. No, WP oh. Forms is the official WordPress company is called Automatic, oh. after the the I owner. Know. After the owner, Matt Mullenweg, automatic. So uh, yeah, they, they can trick us like this. OK, that sounds official. WordPress, WP Forms. But these can be called anything we want. And only the ones that are officially from automatic are official WordPress. Like right here, WP Ninjas, you know that. Who knows? So um, I would, on that idea, I would go for the ones that are more from the official company because yeah it's their software of the core of the site plus the software to give you a contact form they should be super compatible and safe and such uh, but we don't always have that tool from the official company and I would then go by the reviews and all of that to figure out a good one so when you're trying to decide check on that three months High star ratings, uh, go for plugins with a lot of installs. And if I'm going to say, make sure it's got 100,000 installations, I'm not going to pick a number. I won't pick a number because some plugins that you need that are more niche might not have that many. 100,000. They might be more in the range of 1,000, 5,000, 700. So looking at the available results, that's what the a lot is going to be based on the available results. Cool. For a plugin, plugins that are compatible with your version of WordPress. I think it'll still let you install it, even though it, down there it says not compatible with your version. I wouldn't. I wouldn't install a plugin and run my business off of that where it's not compatible. It may work or it may have trouble.
So we're going to give this one a shot uh, under Contact Form 7. Click Install Now. Similar to the plugin, or similar to themes, once we install a theme, we have to activate it. But once we install a plugin, we also have to activate it. So go ahead and also click Activate. This is uh, one of the annoying things about plugins. Depending on the plugin author, the features of the contact form will appear somewhere in the dashboard. In our particular case with contact form 7, we've got a brand new menu item called contact. But no, it's not at the bottom, like duplicator. It's up here. It looks like it's part of the original menu items. They put themselves in there up there. So some plugins will put themselves higher up on the list, some at the bottom, and some in a completely different screen, like in settings. So hopefully it tells you on the on the installed plugin screen, you'll always be able to find them here. But to find them and use them, they're often somewhere else. And usually it'll tell you somewhere. If it's stored in a secret place, it'll tell you here. So search plugin, install plugin, activate plugin. Then, depending on the whim of the developer, the uh, features of the plugin may appear at the end of the dashboard menu, or above, or under settings, or under tools. I've seen it there too, under tools in there. But you'll also always find it under plugins, installed plugins. And that's where you can deactivate it or delete it and such. So, contact form 7, just another contact form plugin, simple but flexible. Uh, the developer details settings deactivate. In this case, going to settings is the same as going to the contact form menu. Uh, so let's go there. Go to contact. Just click on the contact item. You have contact forms, add new, and integration. We have a simple built-in one already. Contact form 1. And uh, here it mentions about um, if you've got, if you're getting spammed, you're about to put a contact form, but even though your your path, even though your uh, email is is hidden, there is that protection, but uh, there's still spammers. So it's here. It's saying, uh, make sure you have a kismet, and you can use this reCAPTCHA. This is the new generation of of CAPTCHA. This is a separate plugin. Uh, another another thing here. So for more security, and it says here. Uh, Emails are going to get sent to you, but they're not going to be stored anywhere except your inbox. So if you had deleted the email you got from someone that contacted you on your site, it's deleted. Uh, this developer also has a separate plugin called Flamingo, which is an add on to also save messages that people send you from the site. I do recommend it. It's an extra plugin, but they both come from the same developer. 
let's take a look at how uh, this form works. Um, let's let's do this first. If you hover over contact form number one, click duplicate. Uh, I want to leave alone the example one that it gives me before I make changes, just so that I always have that copy to go back to. Duplicate. It's called contact form one copy. That's fine. Uh, so it says, copy the short code and paste it into your post page or text widget content. So to use the form, in this case, there is a sh there's a what what's called a short code. It looks like a little bit of this website code, but it's very simple. You copy it and paste it into a post or a page or a widget where you want this form to appear. Before we make very many changes, we'll just try the one that already exists. Yeah. The name contact form one copy matter in any way? No. It only matters for you when you when you're looking at all your contact forms. One might be a contact form for sales, and one might be a contact form for questions. So it would be better to name these that way so you can tell right away what kind of uh, messages people will send you. But the name of it doesn't matter internally. No, I haven't done that yet. All I did was once I um, once I saw contact form, I clicked duplicate, and that's as far as I am so far. So the way we're going to use this is we need to copy this one line of code and paste it somewhere, like our contact screen. Um, if we make changes, which we'll come back to in a moment, we then click Save. We don't, we, we don't need to click Save at this point. It doesn't hurt if we do it. But if we make changes, we have to remember to click Save. Um, so I'm going to get that little block of code there and right-click Copy. And then we'll go over to our Pages, and we will go edit our Contact page. I'm going to copy that line of code. We'll go over to so pages. Just be safe and click save. If it tells you, you it hasn't been saved, then just click save to be safe. I'm going to go over to pages, hover over contact, and then edit. Let's edit contact. And then instead of having our email address there, just delete that and then paste in the short code. This, once a person, once we save and a person visits this screen in the front end, the short code will automatically sort of transform itself into the form. So there's nothing that we edit on this screen, it's back on the contacts. We'll do that in a moment. This is just saying, Contact form 7 exists here. It's set to uh, item 33 in the database. So we've got, in my case, I've got 33 items. Yours may be different, doesn't matter. And this is connected to contact form 1 copy. Whatever the name of it is in, in the other screen. I will update this screen because we've added new content to it. Visit site and go to that contact form and see what it looks like. Let's see. Visit site, contact, your name required, your email required. Why didn't we just click preview to see that? Preview would give you a quick sense of what it looks like, but if you wanted to fully test it out, you'd have to go to the page to then try it, like click send. And then it'll tell me this is required, that's required, and so forth one or more fields have an error, please check and try again. That's a good question. We're just using it as is. And once we come back to edit 
that form, we will see that and we will set it. I was just showing here that um, that short code sort of unpacks itself and becomes a real form with those fields that I want to change and also set it where, where does it go. So uh, if we were editing this page, there's nothing to edit here. We have to go back to contact. We're going to edit the form one copy. And it I, I wish it were a little bit more user friendly drag and drop. Maybe that's why the other plugin has a higher rating, because this one is still a little bit classic in terms of well, I see here, your name required, and then here is the box where people will type text asking for their email required, and it's going to have a box for them to type their email, their subject, and then a box of text where they type, and then uh, the message, and then a submit button that says the word send. So it's, it's code, and if we're not comfortable with that, um, the help file helps you a little bit but let's say I wanted to customize it I wanted the the submit button to say go you see it kind of makes sense that if I want the submit button to say something else I change it there if instead I wanted to say ask me anything instead of it saying your message I change that to say ask me anything or question this is going to display subject. This is going to fill in the subject in the email. This is going to be their email address box and their name. Well, the design of the form is here. And then under mail, this is where it's getting sent to. It's going to get sent to it remembered the name that we had over here under settings. Under settings, admin settings over here. Right there. The person that created the WordPress site, their email address is right there. It doesn't have to be the same. I have this email address of the developer who created the site, but I want this to be sent over to questions at campus.com so it does not have to match what is here with what is in the settings what if you want to change the size of the uh, message box um, make it smaller I think that's going to depend on the theme I think there was a specific size of text boxes in this theme uh, and what I would do is I would go in here to the documentation or the frequently asked questions and, and look it up. I don't see an obvious way here to grow it or shrink it so I'd have to go look it up here in their documentation. So this is what's going to get sent to. Who does it come from? Um, this um, Uh, this is kind of non-intuitive when you see this, but for modern spam compliance, this is correct. This makes it seem like someone sent me an email and it came from myself. Well, this is correct. I wouldn't change that. It is coming from myself. It is coming from my site. But when I would click reply to reply to the person that emailed me, it'll work properly because it'll, it's right here. When you reply, it'll be replying back to the person's email. In the design of the form, there's a box that says type your email here. And that box is called your email. There's a box called your name. There's a box called your subject. So over here under the mail, when a person replies, it's going to be set to whatever they typed into the box, your mail. And the message body will say here, it came from your name. It came from the person's name. 
and their email, and what subject they wrote is right there, and what they wrote in the message box is right there. This can be edited. You know, it's got a little item here. This email was sent from a contact form on Victor's Bakery. I don't even need to put that maybe. I can delete it if I want. Or not. This is going to send an email to who we've got it set to. We should leave from exactly as it is. If you want to change subject, you could. You should leave the header, additional headers alone. And if you want to change the message body, you could. Messages, these are the little pop-ups that you get when there are certain errors on the site. Sender's message was sent successfully. It'll say, thank you for your message. It has been sent. Well, you can change that to say something like, thank you for your message. We'll get back to you right away. If you make any changes to the form, then you click Save. Additional settings is pretty advanced. I wouldn't do anything there. So this plugin, I've used it for a while. I think it's pretty straightforward. It is a little technical, however, with a little bit of code here. So there's more than one contact form to use. Maybe Caldera Forms is better, maybe that other WP contact form is better, give it a try. Uh, I'm going to keep this one here, but if you want uh, to try it a different one, try it out. Let me know how you like it. Because again, I, I don't know them all. I, after a certain point, when you find something useful, you, you stick with it. Uh, but if you all try a different plugin and, and tell me about it, it might be useful to tell the other class, or the rest of the class, I mean. Can you put those other two uh, plugins? That you recommended um, flamingo and something else. Yeah, there was one. Let's see, they, where did they put it? Over here. Yeah, so um, let, let me mention these also in the notes. So this is um, spam fighting, and that one is flamingo saves. Saves emails that were sent from contact form 7. Now let me note something here uh, that'll uh, come up a little bit later, but we'll say here Try to use one plugin for one task. So, example, don't use two contact forms at once. A bigger issue, we'll see a little later, don't use two SEO plugins at once. Oftentimes, these plugins are trying to do something, they're affecting your database. You know, they're trying to function as, as, as normal. And if you've got two plugins that are trying to do the same thing, they might conflict. They might be trying to access the same file, the same part of the database. They might be tripping over each other. So try to have one plugin for one task. Um, people come into the class sometimes and they use a different version of a plugin, then they install the one I recommend, and they leave both, and then their site has problems. Because there's the original plugin, and then there's the new one. 
at the very least what you could do is if you have more than one plugin that does the same thing you could have one acti activated and one deactivated while you test drive the new one and usually you will not be able to transfer the settings and features of one plugin to another if I'm using a certain contact form and it's got it's all perfectly set up and it's set to send an email to me and uh, it saves the messages and all of that that usually does not transfer over to the other plugin each plugin author believes they're making the right plugin and setting it up the right way and they're almost never compatible so this is also like when we look at an SEO plugin the SEO plugin will allow us to write meta tags and descriptions and all of that well if the one I recommend is installed and then another one is installed they're both gonna to try to do the same thing in the exact same fields and such and that'll cause problems yeah um, I went over to the uh, Flamingo uh, plugin mm -hmm. and it's saying download Flamingo plugin from wordpress.org so when I download this it'll put it straight into the dashboard or I have to do something else to activate that you're going to have to read the documentation, uh, but yes, it's going to be something about when you find it over here. Um, and plug in, there's the same author. Okay. So just clicking that link sends me to a link. Yeah, it, it's a little annoying. It kind of sends you back to the developer's site to tell you more about the plugin and such. It doesn't really install it yet you, you have to do it all basically from here now sometimes though they do give you an actual zip file to install and you've got it right here upload it so in the marketplace right here you might find it there and sometimes when you get a downloadable file you have to upload it Okay, so we're going to look at a couple more plugins that I like. Uh, we're going to take uh, one more uh, quick break, uh, and then when we come back, we'll, we'll look at these other plugins I've noted.